So, hey, Plugin India guys. Um, we have here uh, with us uh, Dr. James uh, Miller. Uh, he's from Argonne National Laboratories. He has almost uh, 40 years of research experience. A lot of his in the batteries and fuel cells and hydrogen and electric vehicles. So uh, thank you, Dr. Miller, for agreeing to talk to us here. And with a profile like yours, I'm sure our readers are like, you know, literally waiting next to their screens to hear, uh, get all the information uh, uh, they can. Uh, so let me briefly introduce about uh, me and uh, my, uh, my company or my uh, uh, organization that I represent here. Uh, I'm from Plugin India. And it's uh, originally started as, uh, you know, just a bunch of people coming together and uh, uh, because of their passion of electric vehicles. And uh, uh, then we have had uh, people going and creating, um, uh, you know, then there was no charging infrastructure. Uh, our people were so passionate, they just went at some places and created charging infrastructure like simple 15 amp sockets and then we did uh, rallies and now we are a little more, you know, a few of us have come together and made this a little more structured business and we are doing some consultancy, some awareness events and, you know, going into universities and giving lectures, general way awareness, also working with companies to help them, you know, uh, connect with the consumers and place their products better. So that's us. Our mission is to promote electric mobility in India. And uh, it's, it's, you know, um, it's really great for us to uh, have you here. And, uh, you know, the electric vehicle technology, it just seems like uh, it, it is developing definitely, but somehow people have that expectation uh, based on how the computer technology quickly uh, zoom like the computer, the uh, the processor power was like literally doubling and things like that. So uh, you know, uh, you are probably the best person to comment on this. But what is the direction and pace of technology development in the field of general field around it, electric vehicles like power electronics and and batteries? We'll specifically come to that later. But you know, in general, how, when do you think we'll uh, you know, um, have like really good or comparable electric vehicles uh, to today's internal combustion engine vehicles. First of all, let me say it's a pleasure to be here and uh, I'm impressed uh, with your grassroots organization and uh, the, the ground up uh, approach uh, that you're undertaking and uh, I think that's great. Uh, getting to your specific question, uh, the pace of electric vehicle development, uh, I, 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 as I said, there's been tremendous, uh, really remarkable progress in electric vehicle technology over the last decade, specifically in batteries, but also in terms of uh, electric motors and, and power electronics. They're getting cheaper, they're getting lighter, uh, they're starting to be made in uh, in scale, so the manufacturing costs are coming down. So I, I think there's a lot of progress, a lot of momentum, and I think that's going to continue uh, in the future for a while at least. So I'm, I'm quite optimistic about the future. Okay. So, you know, just, just to uh, like um, have a ballpark, uh, let's say, uh, you know, like in, in U.S. probably, the uh, le simple, uh, uh, let's say like a Honda Civic or a Toyota Corolla like car, which if you fill it full time on a full tank, it can go probably up to like, uh, you know, 250, 300 miles. And it, it costs somewhere in the ballpark of $18,000-ish. So are we anytime, uh, uh, or, or, uh, anytime soon, we are going to see uh, 18,000 or $20,000 electric car that can go 300 miles. Like are we, uh, you know, will we have peer products and in, in what time frame do you think? Will electric cars be at same cost as internal combustion engine cars? Well, the studies that we've done suggest that in order to reach parity with internal combustion engine cars, you need a battery price of about $80 per kilowatt hour. Battery pack price. Battery pack price, yeah, not cells, complete okay. pack. Okay. So that's, that's, that's a ways to go yet. I see. Uh, okay. uh, but I think, I think it is achievable. Now that is to match parity on a first cost basis. Uh -huh. Of course, if because of the lower maintenance costs, the reduced fuel cost, uh, if you look that's at it in terms of life cycle cost, we're much closer than that right now. I see, okay. Yeah. okay. So, uh, granted, individual mm -hmm. buyers tend to look at costs on a first cost, capital cost basis. Mm -hmm. 
fleet buyers tend to look at on a life cycle cost basis. But the majority of sales, of course, are to individuals. Okay. And, and you know, battery is probably the most uh, the looked after or debated area in the electric vehicles field. So far, lithium ion seems to be the very dominant chemistry. Are there any alternative chemistries that you think will become mature soon that are equal or better than lithium ion? I think the next technology that's going to be better than today's lithium ion uh -huh. is next generation lithium ion. I think there's a lot of room for improvement. Okay. Improvements that are in the pipeline right now, uh -huh. the development of, uh, for example, uh, silicon or other alloy uh, anodes to replace graphite, uh, right. the development of high voltage cathodes that will give you perhaps an extra volt in cell voltage. Uh, so those are things that are still achievable within the lithium ion system. It's, so I think there's, there's quite a room for improvement there. Nice. Looking farther down the road, I, I think there's some other systems that are uh, under intense investigation, uh, namely lithium sulfur batteries. I think that's probably the next thing out there after next generation lithium ion. Uh, a few years ago, there was a lot of interest in lithium air batteries, right. but I think that has kind of shifted and uh, emphasis today is probably more so on lithium sulfur batteries. I see. Because I remember there was a company from Chicago itself that was working on it, I think, uh, you know, that was bought by Dyson. They were making vacuum cleaners, we heard, and then uh, they were also getting into electric cars. That, that was a company <laughs> in uh, Ann Arbor, Michigan. Ann Arbor, Michigan. Yes, Sorry. yes, yes. yes, yes. And, uh, from what we've seen so far, that has some promise at very small scale, but we really haven't seen any demonstrations of large scale, anything close to EV sized batteries. So m maybe they're making breakthroughs that we don't know about yet, but uh -huh. um, we haven't seen it yet. I see, okay. Yeah. And, that, okay. and how close are we, or how are we doing on supercapacitors? Because that also seems to generate a lot of interest, <laughs> you know, when, when we hear articles about it, when we read articles about it. Well, you know, traditionally, supercapacitors are great from a point of view of power capability, mm -hmm. uh, not so good from the point of uh, energy storage density. Okay. So for a high power application, a hybrid vehicle or something like that, uh, those make... Uh, are a good good fit, but for uh, long range electric vehicles where there's not so much need for high power, mm -hmm. there's more need for stored energy per mm -hmm. unit weight. Uh, I think the the, the 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 advantage is definitely in the favor of lithium ion batteries. I think there's there there are applications. There is a need for supercapacitors. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, not specifically for a long-range EV, though. I see, I see. So we don't really see anytime soon supercapacitors replacing the batteries in a... In a well, anything can happen, but <laughs> I, I don't expect it. I don't, I, I don't expect it. I see, okay. Yeah. Okay. And then, you know, the Toyota made a lot of headlines, I think a year or two back, about how they thought that the electric vehicles were not the direction to go, but the fuel cells in hydrogen uh, were the direction to go, and they seem to be pursuing that direction very aggressively. So um, as far as technology being mature enough to replace an existing internal combustion engine vehicle at a reasonable cost, how, uh, where are we as, uh, on fuel cells and hydrogen? From a car performance point of view, uh, fuel cell cars are very good in terms of performance. That's not the issue. The issue with fuel cell vehicles is the cost of the fuel cell, uh -huh. the storage of hydrogen uh -huh. on the vehicle, and the availability of low-cost hydrogen refueling stations. Uh -huh. um, so there's, you know, there's some big, big challenges there. I see. Um, <clears throat> there's been a lot of development work on hydrogen storage technology. Uh, but it's a tough problem, and you know when the vehicles from Toyota, Honda, and others Hyundai came out, they were all using high-pressure compressed gas tanks, which is probably good enough. It's not a very elegant solution, mm -hmm. but it's good enough. Uh, but to me, I think it all ultimately comes back to the cost of the fuel cell system, okay. 
and until there's a pathway to a lower cost there, either through elimination of platinum or mm -hmm. development of some other new low cost catalyst, mm -hmm. I, I think uh, fuel cell vehicles are going to be uh, relatively expensive. I see, okay. It's I see. Great. And, you know, um, I'll ask you because I remember a long time back reading this is something not directly related to EV, but I think in Argonne, there was a lot of research going re, going on on acoustic Stirling engine. Am I correct? Was yes, it Argonne? Yes, yes, yes. So that, when I read about that, that was so fantastic. I mean, just you have like a temperature difference and you just create uh, energy out of it. So is there, what is going on? Is there any chance of we seeing vehicles or any serious uh, machines running on acoustic uh, Stirling engine? Uh, I, we're not doing much work, if any, uh, on that anymore these okay. days. Uh, we've, we've moved on to other things. Uh, uh, stratified charge uh, compression engines, HCCI engines, uh, things like that. Uh, uh, we're also doing a lot of work on uh, using uh, high-performance computing to simulate uh, combustion. So this links some of the basic work, basic science capabilities and understanding combustion mm. using high performance computing to simulate what happens in engines. Oh. And it's been a very uh, interesting field lately. Yep. Fantastic. And, and briefly coming back to the, the threshold that you mentioned about the $80 uh, per kilowatt hour battery pack price, uh, you know, uh, the uh, uh, like you know that that's something being able to replace uh, the price being uh, for internal combustion engines. I think as you rightly said, for fleet operators, the cost of ownership is important. But for private owners, especially countries like India, they are very like price sensitive, price tax sensitive. So that eighty dollars or something, I mean, uh, will is probably going to make a huge difference that that you know in in the adoption of electric vehicles. So do you see like uh, from your projections, is there, uh, you know, like is that seven years we are away from that uh, price range or what, what's your general idea? Or uh, you I, would, I would say it's at least 10 years out. At least 10 years out. Ten, ten, more than 10, yeah. Ah, I see, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. I see. And, and you just, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, you're getting a lot of exposure here of, and you probably already know about the uh, electric vehicles in India. So. Do you have any thoughts on what needs to happen more as a more at an industry or policy level? What can we do to make electric vehicle adoption faster? Well, I'm still trying to process. I think I heard a lot of good ideas presented today. <laughs> and, right. And, and uh, uh, I think uh, I think there's the beginnings of a, a, a cohesive strategy here for India. Mm -hmm. So I, I think there's some opportunities. Okay. If if if. Uh, if there's a commitment to it, right. and, and, and uh, they stay the course, uh, uh -huh. I think they're able to succeed in establishing an industry here. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. So yeah, that's that's great. We are we are extremely fortunate to we got a chance to interact with you here. That's been a lot of good information, and uh, you know the, the events like this. That's why we like. Well, well, how do you how, what do you think about this event? How did you like it so far? Well, as I said, I, I heard a lot of good ideas uh, being d discussed and debated and uh, today. So I, I think it's done a lot to bring together industry and government and put them on the same page. And that's that you need that in order to, su to succeed. I see. Okay. And and you know one quick question before I wrap up because this question comes so many times. So it would be great to get uh, your take on this. A lot of people often throw it this point in debate that we shouldn't go for electric vehicles because electric vehicles running on coal-fired power are going to cause more pollution than, um, you know, the internal combustion engine vehicles. So we should probably go slow. So as far as taking a direction is considered, uh, what are your thoughts? Should we try to go for electric vehicles and then, you know, eventually work to clean the power or we should try to clean the power first or are they are the emission levels comparable or are electric vehicles significantly more polluting when they are running on coal-fired power i think even in the worst case uh, electric vehicles are no worse than internal combustion engines but i think uh, the carbon intensity of electricity generation is decreasing that's a clear trend mm -hmm. i think it's being driven partly by 
mandate partly by public desire to improve air quality. Uh, so I think that's going to happen uh, regardless of whether or not electric vehicles happen. I think, I think the grid is going to get less carbon intensive. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much.